What is going on everybody? My name is Japes. Welcome back. Episode number 20 of my path to power. It has been a while. I apologize. As I mentioned, Friday was my wife's birthday. I spent the entire day with her. I went into a very dark spiral on the weekend league on my main account on Saturday and Sunday. Didn't end up playing all of the games. Still got 28 wins, so I was pretty happy with that. I just could not play anymore. I think my max is like 33 games for the weekend. No, that's not true because I didn't play any on Friday, so maybe if I had played the remaining seven games, I would have been in pretty good shape. But I've gotten better. That is the positive news here. Um... And you're not going to see it on the screen right away, but I'm going to be able to talk about things that have made me better. Because you're still getting some footage from the Weekend League in the past, and I don't know how to speed up Weekend League for Path to Power. I'd, I'd ideally like to play a few games, maybe get some rewards. So maybe the goal will be just to try to get enough wins to get a few packs or whatever it is out of it. And that will be the extent of Weekend League on Path to Power. This 41212 narrow that we are rocking, I am actually not very good with. So I am not going to really comment on it that much. There are a lot of guys that really, really like the formation. Like one of the top players that I know, Hectic Jukes. Uh, this is what he uses. I don't know what my deal is, but I cannot use this formation to save my life. And that's not to say that I'm not going to have some relative levels of success coming up here, but it's just not the formation for me. And we're going to switch towards the end of the episode to the formation that I used for this past weekend league. I think it is an above average formation, but I do not think it is perfect. It does have flaws, and I can go into those a little bit more as we get to that point. Yesterday, I don't, yesterday being Monday, I don't really have anything other than watching the Liverpool United game and then losing track of time. So that is where we are. And now we are here. We're here on Tuesday. You will be getting an episode every day this week and through the weekend back to daily. I promise. Um, not a good start here, giving up a goal before half against Toronto FC, but that's okay. He's going to be, make a little bit of a cocky mistake right there. Uh, Draxler going to, I'm going to try to play Muller through, realize I'm not going to outpace. And you can see just, it's just so narrow and I'm trying to force it because this is still when I was not playing very great FIFA, but since I have drastically improved, I'm having success with some kind of weird custom tactics. I've been tweeting about that. You can follow me at AirJapes on Twitter. I tweet about all sorts of different musings and ramblings and tactics and packs or other things that I get. I've also on my main account now packed two informs. I packed Manzukic and Gamero this week, which is cool. Um, I was hoping for one of the other ones, but there's like nothing cooler than the, the, those like fireworks exploding and then the anticipation of like, oh my gosh, what did I get? This is a nice counterattack, but I feel like I'm forced to counter when I use this formation and really I don't want to always play on the counter. I want to feel like I can dominate the game if I want to. Um, but the formations that I'm having more relative levels of success with, uh, the 4-3-3 number... Ooh, which one is it? Is it three? Is three the forgotten one with the two CDMs and a CM? I'm having some success with that. Having success with the false nine again. Don't mind if I do. Loving it now that I've sorted out my instructions and tactics. And I'm sure we will go into all of that in a future episode because I will undoubtedly switch back to that for Path to Power. But I need to get playing, need to get cruising along into divisions and... Uh, what would be ideal would be to, I think, get to Division 1 for Path to Power. And then once we're in Division 1, you auto-qualify for the Weekend League. So we don't necessarily have to play the tournaments unless I think the rewards are good. And when that's the case and we don't have to play the tournaments unless the rewards are good, then we can play the Weekend League whenever we want. As long as we hold Division 1, so then it's Weekend League, tournaments, drafts all things that I really truly enjoy and I'm just trying to get up a little bit higher. I also want to apologize. I feel like I probably deleted a little footage from 
the future or where we're going to be. So if there is a game missing or two missing, uh, I don't think I drop any games actually. So they're cheeky little wins one way or another, but I apologize for that because there, so what I do when I edit, I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually prefer editing on my little Mac laptop, but it does not have a very big hard drive with it. And I've got my PC that the Elgato records straight to. So I transfer it over on external hard drive every time. And uh, there was like a corrupt file, but I didn't think it was corrupt until it was too late and blah, 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 blah. It's a wannabe YouTuber sob story. That is a story. Nonetheless, it's a true story. Um, and not something that I love, but it's not going to have a super impact on the series. So I know I show every game. So just imagine that you see some goals and things like that. I'll still talk about all the players the same. Uh, and we'll see where we are when we pick up next episode, because that'll be the true test of time because I've not logged into this account in quite a few days. I've been grinding away, grinding. Why do I say it like that? Away on my main account, uh, went through just like really playing drafts, trying to get a better, um, squad because while I do complain a lot about the weekend league, I actually really, really enjoy it. When I say I complain a lot, I'm like, how on earth are people supposed to play 40 games without their eyes bleeding out of the sockets? And it is obviously doable, uh, but I love the competition, man. I absolutely love it. I don't even care if I drop games at this point because... Like, when I do, it's, like, really, really frustrating, but I generally know where I went wrong. Um, I know the errors that I made, and I know what I can do to get better, but it's also you're playing good people. So I feel like my FIFA game's improving this year more than it has in past years because of the Weekend League. Um, because in past years, like, even in divisions, like, yeah, you'll come up against some good people, but you'll always get, a, like, a handful of cupcake games. Not to say you don't get cupcake games in divisions, uh, or in the weekend league, but as a whole, I think it's a lot better. Uh, EA came out with their first patch today, which is great. I playing the game, I have had again quite a bit of success with it. Shooting for me is a lot better. This is just like off the training ground. If the training ground is obviously a mental image in my head of the way that corner should work, we're just driving it to the far post and not it back across, and it works absolutely perfectly when it when stuff like that works out you're like yeah that's what i'm talking about and i obviously get very very excited about it because it's not it's your it's an atypical corner right it's not the corner that you're used to seeing which is what i i try to provide you guys with a lot of stuff that's a little bit different a little bit um off edge um so we do hit silver one and i can't remember the prizes are but i don't think i got anything in the packs and i think i lost the pack gameplay footage as well which is it sucks but luckily there was nothing great in there so i can't write oh my gosh crazy weekend league pack yada 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 also have you seen those team of the week packs if you have not seen those on twitter go check them out they're so cool if you get elite you get a team of the week pack which is a full pack of players that are in team of the week it's absolutely amazing really really awesome stuff so i wanted to show you the custom tactics the 4411 the formation that i ran this past weekend on my main account uh and the formation that you're going to get some gameplay with for this turkish team uh, the Super League side, we're going to go ahead and add all these players. I Charisma is a quality player this year. Um, for He's an 83 rated winger, which puts him in a decent range, but he is he's really, really nice and really, really good to use. So hybriding him in, I don't know if it's easy, if it's challenging, but it's definitely something to consider because he does the job. Um, I'm going ahead and just adding players in here to get this squad built and then we'll run through my kind of awkward crazy instructions that I used since I have changed up my instructions so you're going to see when I show them on the screen here that I was using the what was I using the cover tactic defensively and I have finally come to terms and realized that I am much much better when I play the offsides trap my center backs do more of what I expect them to do, and I'm able to pressure strikers and win the ball back more quickly, create counterattacks, and it's just it's just better. So these are the tactics that we used like before for the first weekend league. Yikes, they are a bit crazy. Um, 
but I'm gonna tweak some things a little bit. And I think I might even have tweaked them beyond this point a bit, but uh, right now what you're seeing is it just sits here. I'm looking on my other screen so I can like copy them over because I test a lot of things on my main account so I can give you guys the good things on this account and pressure goes up. Aggression, I think aggression I actually ended up taking down to 60 maybe. I don't know, but we definitely played a few of that. And those are the more or less the tactics that I use. I also tweaked for the weekend league. I took my defensive width and brought it in a little bit tighter. I think it's like 50 or 40 um, is where I like it. Kind of keep more compact at the back. But those are a few of my many, many musings. The offside trap, definitely the way forward for me. I don't like that. Like, with cover, your players just leave these huge gaps for your attackers to run through. Like, I want to step up and win the ball back. It's just, like, my mentality and the way that I play. So when I had the AI running cover, I was just not doing that well. There have been many people on Twitter that have been like, Japes, you are crazy. You're going to get shredded when you get to Division One. yada, yada, yada. Only time will tell, and I could get shredded the next time that I use, them in the, use the, those tactics in the weekend league. But for now... I like them. These are the instructions for the players. Really, really kind of bizarre. Um, it's cool, though, using the center forward and the 4411 as a false nine type instruction because they just like turn up in pockets between the midfield and the back line and really, really help with attacks and kind of link up play. So I also have drift wide on my striker, which allows when Edo like will go out left or go out right, it allows my false nine center forward or my central midfielder midfielders to fill that gap in behind him um and he, Edo when he drifts wide is also dragging a CB out a lot of times or creating a two-on-one on the wings with whatever the left wing or, or left mid or right mid that is out there I have him on stay wide which for a four-man midfield or for outside mids I think is good for wingers I think cut inside is the way to go I don't put on get in behind because frankly I don't care about getting in behind like that's just not how I've been playing lately. So you'll see obviously some through balls and things like that out of me, but for the most part, not too much. These are some of our players that have sold on so far. And oh, so these are a little bit flipped and flopped because I did, okay, so you're gonna see me list all of my weekend league players up for just like whatever their start price and open bid buy now is because I just wanted to get rid of them. I was so annoyed. I was like, get out of here, get out of my club. I don't want to deal with you anymore. You know, it's like almost like a rage cell, but it's not totally. So I go into the weekend league qualifying tournament. Again, you can only have max three players from one club. So just tweaking a few things there. Uh, and this is the squad that I'm going to go ahead and rock go in with. It's a tidy, tidy little fitness squad. I would recommend. There are a few players in this squad that are really, really awesome. Um, I think Wesley Snyder this year is great. And getting him into a, like a Dutch side or, you know, hybriding him in with some legends or something like that as a central midfielder, I think he's really, really good as an attacking man. I think he's really, really good. So definitely one of those players that goes often overlooked because of league. Um, the other, or one of the other CMs that I have in this team, uh, Arslan is really a nice budget player, but it's, is Jakob. Now I definitely could have mispronounced that. So if I have any Turkish viewers, feel free to correct me. But the uh, or the O with the unlaut, or I don't know if it's called that in Turkish, but uh, I'm assuming it's the same O as Izzel. So it's is Jakob is what we're going with. Uh, nice finish there from Snyder. But he's great. Four-star skills, four-star weak foot. Really, really nice, well-rounded stats. Um, and again, a player that I would love to say is easier to get into more squads, but kind of difficult and challenging. Samuel Eto also really fun to use just as like throwback. Uh, other great players, uh, Sheju is a pretty solid CB. Same with Kier, uh, the Danish center back. I don't think either of them are standouts. Kresma is pretty darn good as well. There's no real standout players in the Turkish league um, at this point, at least. As far as golds go, now I'm sure there are some standout silvers. I almost went with the silver right back. He's a Frenchman. He looks awesome. Nice. Look at Charisma doing things. I wish that it hit the top net because then I could say, top net, the best net. Top net, the best net, baby. We'll call it anyway. Uh, making this one 2 nil, so a good start to this. And you can see my gameplay. I hope you could tell the difference because I certainly can. The buildup is way, way different. Like you'll see, win it back here and... 
I'm not necessarily just pinging it through. I've got players that are coming short, checking two, and I'm able to, yes, ping some passes around, but it's a slower buildup. Yes, I am in the lead, and when I play with a lead, I am a much, much better player, uh, but aren't we all? So that's kind of a mood point. I don't know why he calls his keeper right here, but Kresma is going to bang on the keeper every time when he does that, making that one three you know, in the first round of the qualifying, which is great. I uh, also want to say tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching it, I'll be doing like a little live stream type thing or not. It's not going to be my live stream, but Matt HD Gamer, friend of Path to Power, is going to be doing some sort of live stream on his channel. And he's asked if I want to hang out during the City and Barcelona match. So if you feel like tuning in and seeing what I have to say about the match as it's going on, you, of course, can tell me that I'm a stupid yank or whatever on Twitter because I get that quite a lot. And generally I roll my eyes, but there are some like very, very angry comments in which case those people just get blocked. So be nice, sort of. You can tell me you disagree with me, like maturely disagreeing with me is totally different than like an outright attack for who knows various reasons. Uh, my accent or my nationality does not have anything to do with whether or not I know a thing or two about a sport, a club, or a team. I do not think that because someone is American, they don't know anything. I do not think that because someone is English, Spanish, Welsh, whatever it is, German, they're automatically going to know more. My experience, um, my cousin married, and well, this is like an example. My cousin married a Brazilian girl and speaking with her family, they knew just about nothing about soccer or football because they were not super fans of the sport. So that is just like, why would you assume that they would not know or they would know more because of the nation? I just don't understand. It's not a real argument for me. There have been a few of you guys that have talked to me about the NFL or even know more than I do about the NBA uh, because I don't really follow the NBA. So Let's keep those arguments at a minimum. But if you want my thoughts on the games or predictions or things like that, again, feel free to tweet me at Air Japes. I'm always happy to talk. Is Jakob grabbing a goal there for us? Also, this guy's using Chicharito, and he scores a goal in the 90th minute here. Not Chicharito, but Komen. That is going to be his only shot on target. Really, really frustrating to give that up in the 90th, but the informed Chicharito is a man on FIFA. He is a clinical finisher. I don't know how much he goes for right now, but if you need a striker for your Bundesliga team, you are not quite to Lewandowski or Aubameyang, go ahead, pick up my man Chicharito, Javier Hernandez. He is great, uh, and I would highly recommend him. I had him in a draft as a false nine, which I was not super stoked about because his passing is debatable uh, with like 65 or 68, so at that CF spot, not great, but he was so clinical in front of goal, I found myself wanting to go out and buy him afterwards. So just things to consider. Bring on Ben Arfa for his last game with the club, as well as Adair for his debut. We have him for an eight-game loan spell, and he's really good as well. Tidy little player. Going to get really fortunate right here. I'm sure this guy was super frustrated, but he's going to outpace the players at the back as a fresh player on. Going to clinically slot by the keeper, making it 2-1, 98-minute. Give me some of that, but I, I really, really like him. Um, and I'm surprised you don't see him in more teams or brought on more as a super sub because he's a really, really versatile player. Uh, you could bring him on as a sub, as an attacking mid, as a striker, as a winger, as an outside mid, and he would have relative levels of success. And those are the type of players that I look for when I look to my sub bench or players to include like Marco Royce, obviously, is a fantastic player, but he's a great example. Welcome to the chip life, Ed Dare. Uh, but he's a great example because would you feel comfortable playing Royce as a winger? Yes, absolutely. Would you feel comfortable playing him as a striker? Most definitely. As an attacking mid, for sure. Even as a CM, maybe not ideal, but probably in a pinch. He's just a player that you're happy to bring on in any of your attacking roles. Same as where I look for like uh, CBs or not CBs, but I generally tend to carry outside backs on my sub bench that I think I could sub on as a CB or as a CDM as well. So things to consider, uh, I guess EA have changed injuries or toned them down to the point where now you're not forced to sub a player out, which is kind of a bummer, uh, but it is what it is till it isn't. And it's nice for drafts, I suppose. 
Uh, this was, I suppose, probably when I first logged in because you're going to see me list up all of my players now. So there's really no point in watching too much of this. Just listen as we move forward. Uh, so those are the things to consider, but since the injury thing isn't a thing anymore, I would not be surprised if you see people starting to bronze bench other than three subs, the max that you can have. So after the game, let me know if you notice your opponents are doing that because you can pop into the player ratings and check out their bench there. So just food for thought. Let me know what you think. But that is where we are going to come to a close for this episode. If you guys do enjoy the series and enjoy the episodes, please drop a like or thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think as well. It does help me out. But other than that, we'll be back with an episode of Path to Power tomorrow, hopefully earlier than today. My name is Japes, and I will catch you all next time. My mind is in a day.